Hello and welcome to Word on the Street, the podcast that tells you everything that you need to know about attracting and winning new business. And of course, today is no different. My name is Katie Street. I am the host for this podcast. And if you are a regular listener, I'm going to apologize because it's been a bit patchy, but there is a reason for that. Well, one, I had an amazing trip in Mexico over Christmas for three weeks. So I missed three weeks of recording because we usually do come out every single week, every Thursday morning. But there are things bubbling in the background, guys. I am super excited to share with you. So if you tune in next week, I will be revealing why things have been a bit patchy and some very, very exciting things to come. But of course, today is just as exciting because with me on Word on the Street today, I have the amazing, I mean, I always say everyone's amazing. Everyone I invite on the podcast is genuinely amazing. Otherwise, I wouldn't have them on. Kevin Dunn. He is the senior manager at HubSpot for their academy, but he also is the host of their podcast, Agency Unfiltered, which interviews agencies on growth, marketing, everything that you need to know about running, working within the agency world. So today isn't a normal episode. It's actually a pod share. Rather than me being the interview uh, I was the interview E. So this is a little clip from me, well, hey, being on HubSpot's podcast and me and Kevin talk about, well, various different things, but really one of the main things that I always talk to you guys about, which is why marketing is truly the solution to the sales problem. And we talk about some of the tactics and the things that we do at Street that can really help you scale your marketing, help you solve the sales problem. And yeah, I hope you're gonna enjoy listening to it. So we've got a little clip from the podcast in today's episode. If you want to listen to the full episode, we're going to pop a link in the show notes so you can head over and listen to HubSpot's podcast. I mean, I can't believe I've been invited to HubSpot's podcast. I am making it in life, guys. I'm very, very happy about this. So without further ado, let's go and have a listen to me and Kevin having a chat on HubSpot's Agency Unfiltered podcast. If you're only ever trying to sell to your audience, you're cutting out potentially, usually in the B2B world, which is what most of us agencies are, we're B2B you know, service providers, you're cutting out 95% of your audience because 95% of the people that you want to sell to at the time you want to sell to them do not want to buy your services. So mm-hmm. if you're only ever trying to sell to them, picking up the phone, doing lead gen, picking up the fur or sending prospecting emails, hoping that you're going to land on someone's desk on a day when you've sent a nice enough e- email to get their attention or you know made a nice enough phone call or even got through to them on the right day when they really want your services and they really like you and they really want to buy from you. It's so hard to do. So My whole business is built upon flipping that right on its head and building engagement with your audience so that, you know, should you need to do that sales outreach, you've already got a warm, engaged audience of prospects that know who you are, that trust you, that listen to your content like a podcast, that have engaged with you, that trust you, that come to you for advice when they need it, that know that you understand the challenges that they face as a business. If you can do that, it's so much easier to sell to them because not only do you have an engaged audience, and I know this is what HubSpot is built on as well, so let's hope, we're, let's hope we're all doing the right thing here, but not only do you have an engaged audience of people that are much more likely to pick up the phone to you, so you're not going to have to make those awkward sales outbounding calls, but when you're in a competitive pitch or you're, you know, whatever, you're in a competitive environment pitching up against other agencies, if you've already got a relationship with your prospects and the people that are making a decision on buying you or not because they've been engaging with your content, you're already three, four, five steps ahead of your competitors and they're much more likely to pick you. So whichever way around you look at it, it's always better to lead your sales solving approach with a marketing led solution because if you don't, you're always on the back foot. It's harder to get the the opportunities in the first place and it is much, much harder to convert them. 
So there you go. Yes, love <laughs> That's that. it. We, yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then we'll, I guess we'll wrap it there. No, that's a great summary. Uh, your, your, your note here to, towards the end, right? Uh, you should be leading with a market for yes. a marketing first approach, right? Actually, and before I um, uh, double click into some of that, uh, you teed up to maybe some differences in sales culture, maybe North America uh, based yeah. on uh, what, what's, what's, your, what's your read on that? Yeah. Well, you tell me if I'm wrong. So we do some work in the States, lucky me. Um, and I think the American market to my in my experience is you're just much happier talking about sales. You're happier to be sold to that. You're much more direct as people. I mean, someone said this to me earlier, actually, uh, we were talking to one of our clients who we're doing some work for in the States and in the UK. And they were like, yeah, it'll take you know, in, in the U S it's like, they'll give you an answer straight away. It will take three days in the UK. So <laughs> it's just, I think in the U S you're, you're, you you're, you're the cult sales isn't a dirty word in the UK. It's like, oh gosh, sales. Oh no, we don't sell to people. We're far, far too polite to sell to people. Um, so there is a bit of, I think there's definitely a bit of that, which is why actually this approach in the UK works even better sometimes. But it, you, know, it should work the same in in both in both markets. Yeah, no, it's an interesting read. I mean, uh, yeah, I think uh, maybe we're we're direct, more direct in our communication. So you're not going to end up with somebody on the receiving end of a sales conversation if they didn't want to be there necessarily, right? So yeah. I, yeah, I get that sense. Totally. Um, now, Katie, you'd mentioned uh, uh, the two things here is what it's, and correct me if I'm wrong, but like, okay, from a marketing perspective, how does it actually contribute to, you know, your organization's sales efforts? First, uh, it helps improve timing, right? It keeps prospects warm because the timing piece is just so incredibly difficult to nail down. And then second, it sounds like it also widens your net, right? So not only is it Nailing the timing, nailing the the people that you can prospect, you can reach out to. Uh, timing, widening your net. Are those accurate? And is there any other aspect of this that I'm missing? Like, how does this contribute, you know, to a sales organization? Yeah, I guess. I mean, in every way that you've mentioned and more. So, really, you know, one, it means, like you say, you've got an engaged wider net of people that know who you are so they know who you are. They start to build trust and engagement with you. So, for instance, when I started street you know we we as most agencies probably did have grown up on referrals so and and not for long because this is what I do right so if I didn't start doing this from day one and practice what I preach then I wouldn't be doing my job properly so when we started we'd mainly you know I'd won my first two or three clients off the back of referrals people that knew me people that had seen that I'd gone out on my own recommendations then from clients that then you know blah, blah 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 probably first six months or so Straight away, I was like, uh, especially as I launched the business amidst COVID, I mean, well, not amidst COVID, six months prior to COVID hitting, then hello, I was like, oh my God, I really need to dial my marketing up because there is no way that my lovely new business that I've just launched is going to gonna suffer and die in COVID. So we started doing webinars and really, actually, that was to help people that just were like, what on earth do we do? How do we get attention in the current space? How are we going to deliver our marketing? How are age? And it was really all for agencies. So we were kind of, you know, back then an agency purely for agencies. So how are we as agencies going to continue to attract clients and continue to get in front of them? So we started doing webinars going, you know, we're going to teach you guys as agencies how to continue to attract and win new clients. And then we just started doing it month after month, did the first webinar, got a few new business inquiries, then started doing the podcast, still doing the webinars every month. Still, you know, now we do live events, podcast, webinars, everything. And our audience has grown and we use HubSpot to deliver all of this. Our audience, our engaged audience, I think that continually engage just via our, you know, that we can see via email is around 4,000 really highly actively engaged, a really highly actively engaged audience, which in the agency world is not bad things. There's about 25,000 agencies in the UK. And then outside of that, our reach on LinkedIn, because we shatter our content and we develop content, you know, everything we do. So that, you know, the podcast, mm-hmm. I will cut up 
three or four different types of video um, pieces of content that then go onto our, my LinkedIn and then go and get shared on YouTube as little YouTube shorts that we do a write up for the website. We do, you know, that one thing that I do creates so much. So our reach and our engagement beyond that, I think something like 200,000 view, our content gets something like 200,000 views every single month so it's our reach is huge now there is no way that I would be able to influence and engage with that many prospects if I was just taking a sales-led approach to delivering sales I can do it because of the way that we're approaching it and the more we do it the more you get muscle memory in creating content that is talking to the needs of your audience you know at the end of the day anyone who is an agency who's looking to use HubSpot or any kind of platform to power this kind of stuff up, your reach, you just can't, you just couldn't, you, if you had 20 people picking up the phone all day, you couldn't reach this many people and you wouldn't be able to reach them in such a trustworthy, engaging way. So it absolutely has been one, the thing that saved my business, but also it enabled us to have Forex growth in our um, second year of business, which meant that we were rated as one of the top independent agencies in the UK. Um, we've got amazing client reviews. You know, we've grown, we've learned. We're now a HubSpot certified partner, so we can deliver HubSpot for other clients. You know, we've practiced what we preached, and it's enabled us to grow in an astronomical way. That if we had just done, you know, cold calling, we just never mm-hmm. would have. We would never have got. Hey guys, just interrupting very quickly because I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't tell you about Tamba. If you're enjoying today's podcast, I know you are going to love the Tamba platform. Tamba is full of all the insights, hints, tips, and fantastic content and training and templates and events that you need to enable you to attract and win more new clients yourselves. If you enjoy the podcast, it's this kind of content that you'll be able to see, get more of, save to your profile, work through training programs with some of my fantastic guests, actually. So if you haven't checked it out already, please do www.tamba.io. That's www.tamba.io. Go have a look. I hope you love it. And I hope to see you at some of our online events very, very soon. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm jotting down some notes here. Uh, like, okay, what does, what has the marketing mix, uh, for, for your business looked like, uh, what can others, you know, uh, replicate for themselves? Obviously Forex growth, I think you'd mentioned like phenomenal growth, tr- tremendous growth. And it sounds like I'm, I'm hearing two strategies, uh, uh, categorically here. First, sounds like you take like an, it's an event led, right? Webinars, uh, maybe some in-person events, uh, your podcast, obviously, but there's, there's some like, there's a recurring sense of events. Uh, but then you're also taking that material uh, and then the second category is like repurposing, right? For social, finding clips, micro content, right? Uh, is that a fair assessment of those two? Are those the two halves of the strategy that you found to be most successful? Totally. Yeah. So, but in order to make that happen, you're a hugely important, I mean, I feel like I'm, I feel like you, it sounds like you've briefed me to like sell in HubSpot, which I promise you guys haven't. And no, no offense. We do use other platforms sometimes other than HubSpot that do the same kind of thing. But yes, essentially I'll start from the beginning. We, we develop content that's easy for us to create The things that we see the most impact, and remember, we don't just do this for street. We also do this for all of our clients. And we Mm -hmm. tend to work with a lot of MarTech nowadays. We work with, you know, some of you guys will know them, big commerce, contentful, you know, big MarTech businesses, as well as large scale and still, you know, larger still on the whole, but independent Mm -hmm. agencies as well. And what it enables us to do, but because we, you know, do this all the time is see what's working. So by far, Events, I would say, if you're looking to scale things up quickly, events are a great way to do that. And there's there's lots of reasons behind that. One, if you do it properly and you record content, it's going to enable you to shatter that content down. So even if you're doing a kind of closed round table, very senior leaders dinner event, you could still ask some of them, could you do a piece to con- camera about what we discussed around X? Hopefully some of them might say yes. If you're mm-hmm. doing a larger scale event and you've got a panel discussion, you know, 
make sure that you record it. Make sure you get that, you capture that content, you write it up. And if you don't record it, at least, you know, use something like, I don't know if you guys use Otter, but the, it sort of records conversations and transcribes them for you. We always use that. Transcribe it, develop a write-up. Make sure if you're doing an event, you're thinking about the other ways outside of the people in the room, how you're going to get more out of that content. So that's a great way. The other great things, I'm just going to break each one down. The other great thing about events is you get in front of your audience and this is so important because you can't do an event unless you've got a subject and something that people are going to want to come to and you've got a venue Mm -hmm. that's good and you've got good speakers those are kind of you know you've got to have good speakers good venue good subject but doing events themselves you can actually well you're going to be sat there with your prospects asking them questions around the challenges that they've got in their business hearing their problems which is then going to help you develop better content and better stories for your next event. So it also events, I just think are brilliant because it gets you in front of your audience. It gets you having face-to-face conversations. It enables you to create a huge amount of content for you know the rest of the audience that can't attend those events. But it also probably most importantly gives you really deep insights into the challenges your audience face so that you can create even better content. And the same goes, you know, same story for webinars, same story for podcasts. I get, I get, When I have people on the podcast, it's a great marketing tool for me because, well, it's a great sales tool because I can go, oh, I really want to work with these people. I'm going to ask them on my podcast rather, or ask them to speak at an event rather than go, hey, I want to sell to you. I can go, hey, I want you to come and talk to me about you know, I've seen that you're doing this within the business. I'd love you to come and talk to me on this podcast, or I'd love you to come and talk about, you know, what you're doing at, I don't know, Ted Baker. Um, we do, we've done a few events with Ted Baker recently, so that's why I'm thinking about them. But, you know, come and speak about what you've been doing at this event. And they go, oh yeah, okay, we'd like to do that. That's, you know, I'm very flattered by that rather than trying to sell something to them. And then usually what happens is in that conversation, they go, oh, actually, I really need some help with this. Katie, do you know any agencies that can help you with that? And I'm like, Oh yeah, one of my clients could help you with that. <laughs> Off I go, pass yep. over. So it's you know, it's a it's a really great way to you know build relationships, get a better understand. You know, it's all about relationships at the end of the day, but also mm-hmm. it gives us a much better understanding of what our prospects want. And then the other thing that you you know, you reference there is the kind of content strategy. So you know what that then also enables us to do is shatter that content down and get loads of reach across Instagram, LinkedIn tend to be our kind of priority channels. Um, and you know, and usually just as a tip for LinkedIn guys, do it from the person, not from the business page. People want to engage with people, so you're going to get much better results if you engage as a person. And here we go, another HubSpot spoiler. You can actually set your HubSpot off to post as a person. HubSpot, set your HubSpot off. Set your HubSpot up to post as a person from a person. So you don't just have to post from your company pages in HubSpot. You can actually link it to individuals within your business as well. So it you know, it for us that it, it just powers everything. And we do, like I say, we do we don't just you know, we do practice what we preach, but we don't just do this for us. We do this for lots of agencies. So we really see the trends and, you know, what's working. I love the the emphasis on building the relationships, right? And you also had a note there too, events, whether in person, virtual, what have you, uh, those conversations can and should inform uh, future content. Oh, here they're at. It's almost like, you know, uh, pre-sales discovery, but in a more organic conversation. Oh, now we know the challenges, the problem areas. That's content in the future. Yeah, exactly. And and you start to see trends. You know, if you've got a panel discussion or you're running these kind of events week in, week out or month in, month out, week in, week out might be a bit tough. Um, although I have done that a few times. Um, the, the podcast I do every week. But yeah, when you're having these conversations all the time, you'll start to spot trends as well. So you'll go, actually, this market sector that we're prospecting to, they're I've heard this like come up four or five times. I know that it's a real pain point for them. So we should create some more content around that. And so obviously it sounds like events uh, and repurposing that content for social, you know, video distribution, those are working really well, especially again, through the lens of attracting potential new clients for your business. Anything you're shying away from, moving away from either uh, an intentional omission or an aspect of your marketing strategy that used to work that isn't as effective as as it once was. You know what I mean? Do you know what? I think you have to try everything because every bu- at the end of the day, every business is different, right? I am 
a show off and a chat box and I love talking. So for me, attending events, going to talk to people, hosting a podcast works brilliantly. Not every business has a me. So some businesses, you know, and some of these kind of businesses we work with, developing written content is better. Some businesses, you know, doing a podcast is better. Some businesses, you know, I don't know, doing live events might not be right for them and they might only be able to do webinars because their staff or their audience are too distributed. So I think the key really is working out something that's going to work for you that's going to be easy for you to replicate because a lot of a lot of this is about muscle memory. So great, you've got to have the tactics, but do it once, that ain't enough. You have got to do it month in, month out. You've got to show up consistently. And I don't know if you guys, I mean, he is going global, but listen to the Diary of a CEO podcast with Stephen Barlett. So Stephen's head of content actually came to, I did a live podcast event, Grace Andrews, his, who basically is Stephen mm-hmm. um, <laughs> online, but she manages all of his content, came to one of my events recently. And she said the biggest thing for them it is like, you know, those marginal gains and of course, always thinking how they can be extra, but consistency is absolutely key. So whatever you're going to do, do something that you can do regularly. If that's write a beautiful article, write an article and release it regularly, send it out, you know, send out a monthly newsletter, send out a weekly roundup, do a video and post it on LinkedIn for your top tips that you see. Whatever, There's so many different things that you can do. So many, you've just got to work out the ones that are going to be easiest for you to do that are going to land you know, in your audience's face in a place where they live and they show up and email I do think is a great one because it's a business critical platform so mm-hmm. I always always we always send campaigns out by email because people have to use email usually day to day there's not many of us that don't use email LinkedIn and other channels are kind of not everyone goes to them you know not everyone logs into them every day I mean I do because I do (laughs) but not everyone does so think about where your audience live and breathe show up in the places that they show up develop content that is going to be easy for you to develop I don't think there's any that I don't think work I think they all work if you just do it consistently things that we see sorry I'm I'm riffing I told you I was going to do this Kevin this is a a safe place to riff so yeah (laughs) riff riff away Um, I talk I talk way too much um but you know, one of the things that we're that we have seen work, you know, really hard is on socials. Definitely, slide shares work really well because, for instance, LinkedIn and Instagram they lo- they want to see interactions. So every time you slide through a slide share, it counts mm-hmm. as an interaction. So the more interactions you get, the higher your content is rated by those platforms. So things, you know, that's a really obvious one. Like if you're again, if you're doing a podcast or you're doing a an event and you get like five key takeaways put it into it or 10 key takeaways whatever it is develop a slide share put it onto Mm -hmm. linkedin and put it onto your socials that's another different piece of content get a video clip do that as well but those those are things that we see you know the the it's really worth kind of keeping an eye on you know updates and the platforms what they're doing what they're up to what are they going to weigh more heavily right what do they want to see exactly there's little hacks like that like you know video content is always does really well but actually sometimes our slide shares will outperform the Mm -hmm. video content because linkedin rates them more highly so yeah keep an eye on the trends and there are some good people to follow um including grace andrews she's called Mm -hmm. on instagram the social climber i think has she been she's been on the podcast because i think i introduced her to someone from hubspot at yeah, she my hasn't, event. She hasn't. Maybe, you know, I, I would imagine maybe she on. tunes in and uh, that's a good CTA. That's a good nudge. Well, yes. Yeah, love that run. Um, she's, she's pretty, and she's really good to follow because she talks about the changes to the algorithms. So I really love these kind of shorter, different episodes. I hope you enjoyed listening today. As I said earlier, if you did enjoy it and you want to hear more, go and head over to HubSpot's Agency Unfiltered podcast and listen to more on there. The whole episode is published by Kevin and his team. You'll be able to hear what we've just talked about, but a lot, lot more. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please do pop me a note. There is exciting news coming through very, very soon. If you're interested in finding out about what's coming next, please pop me an email, katie at street.agency and I will make sure I add you to our mailing list or you can go onto our website, street.agency and sign up for alerts and join our mailing list. If you've got any questions, 
please pop them to me on email. I really want to make all of our content at Street about you and the challenges you're facing. I hope you enjoyed today. I hope you do go and listen to HubSpot's Agency Unfiltered podcast and that you love that content too. And yeah, have a great day, evening, morning, wherever you are in the world.